I would like to nominate the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, 49 wins a year ago. And I would just, I'm going to throw to you for the uh, leadoff prediction here with a stat that I'm sure you're aware of. Uh, when Milwaukee's best four guys were on the floor together last year, Lillard, Giannis, Middleton, Lopez, plus 16.3. That's a stupid net rating. That's like Jokic, you know, with the starting five net rating type of thing for Denver. Um, and it was a huge positive, actually in two of the three cases, even higher than plus 16.3 per hundred, whether it was Malik Beasley as the fifth guy, whether it was Andre Jackson Jr. as the fifth guy, whether it was Patrick Beverly, all three of those guys when playing with the other four, like there's a plus 20 something in there. There's a plus 30 something in there. I think Gary Trent Jr. can handle that fifth spot as well or better than all three of those guys. So this comes down to how often can that unit be on the floor? And Doc Rivers, going back to the Clipper days, just loves to play his best guys together all the time and just tank in those reserve minutes. Um, I think this is a team that's kind of set up to just bank huge, like positive margins with those guys out there. Health questions abound. But are you saying better or worse? I'm obviously going to say they're they're going to be better. But I would agree with you, and I don't really have anything to add other than, like, I think that they can get to a point where they're staggering and still being fine, too. Mm -hmm. Like, some of the minutes where it's like, if you don't have Brooke Lopez on the court, like, they had some lineups that really killed. And so I think they can get to different situations. I do worry about Chris Middleton's ankles. He's yeah. just on this weird trend where it's like he gets injured, it takes him a while to ramp up, and then he's really good just in time for them to lose early in the playoffs. And so that's something to monitor. But the other thing, I don't think you mentioned this unless I missed it, they made a little shot like 33% on catch and shoot threes last year. Mm. You don't think he's not getting better. That is never going to happen again. And so now you get to go through another training camp with him and Giannis and he's more settled in Milwaukee. He's talked a lot about the mental toll of moving. You can make fun of him for it if you want, but that's like a real thing and it shouldn't be as big of a factor this year. The thing with this team, by the way, they did slick work on the margins. Like, forget even just even before they had Gary Trent Jr. Getting Torian Prince and um, Delon Wright Absolute just massive wins for the organization. I don't know how you feel about their draft. I wasn't super high on it, but like getting players who can contribute now, DeLon Wright, Torian Prince, and Gary Trent Jr. all fill rotation spots. Like they can play in a playoff rotation, I would argue. So I, I think they're better. They should be in the 50s. And look, they have the cushion because we saw it last year for some of their guys to miss time and they'll they'll still they'll still get there. I do worry about the lack of overall athleticism on this team now and point of attack defense is probably still going to be an issue even with Gary Trent Jr. because I assume that like DeLon Wright can probably handle it, but you are conceding a lot offensively uh, at that point. So they do have some questions to answer, but like this team, if they're even relatively healthy, I would just think that they're going to have like 52, 53 wins. Yeah. If you're going to say they're going to be worse, it's got to be based on Middleton is just like, this is finally the injury that Middleton just can't overcome. Like he can't even be effective in short stints, And that Lopez, who was kind of approaching the cliff. It felt like at times last year really like goes all the way over it at his age. I just, I'm with you. I think, I think there's enough top end talent and just like, a, yeah, the, the heist of Trent jr. Right. Prince and Portis are like a pretty darn good six, seven, eight, uh, in terms of rotation pieces. So I, I think, I think there's more than enough here to get over 50. It is my turn to pick for you. Uh, oof, who don't want to pick. I honestly, this team confuses the hell out of me. So we're going to go to the Miami heat. Grant. Oh, good. Yeah, this was a really hard one for me too. Um, forty six four, wins, forty six. Right? Year. I forgot. It's like it didn't seem like last year was such a like failure for them, and then you right. look and at forty six. They actually wins. won more games than they did the year that they made it to <laughs> right. the finals. And look, they had stuff going on. The you know, Kayla Martin, who's gone, not fully healthy. Jimmy Butler dealt with stuff. Terry Rozier was injured by the end of the year. Tyler Hero missed time. The list continues to go on. I just. I don't know how to square away with what they did. I thought they hit a home run with keeping Haywood Highsmith at the money they did, mm -hmm. but they did lose Kayla Martin. Um, everyone loves Colel Ware and is very high on Jaime Jaquez. I just, I have no idea what to make of this team right now. I kind of Orlando this one too, where I was just looking for teams to get worse. And I, I am going to say that the heat are going to get worse. If that happens, I think it's like 44, 45 wins, which should not feel like an affront. Cause like you said, they were down lower than that two years ago when they made the final. So that doesn't foreclose on the possibility that they just, you know, go on a run. But like, so you, you mentioned Martin. I think that's a, that's a significant loss. 
if you were going to say they're going to be better, right? Like, cause he right. was hurt last year. And, and I think Kyle Lowry's departure is like, not nothing. Um, I think Tyler hero, how many games is he going to play? P missed half the season last year. Jimmy Butler played 60. Is Jimmy Butler at the point where you cannot feel confident in saying, Oh, he'll play more than 60 games. Like, I don't know. I, I think, I think well, that contract year, Jimmy Butler, maybe, maybe. Yeah, maybe. But then that cuts the other way too, of like, how pissed off is he going to be? Like probably since it's him, he's, it means he's going to play really well, but he's just got the mileage of someone that like, I don't know. It's it, 60 games. If you get over under 60 games played for Jimmy Butler, are you taking the over? I'll take the over. All right. I'm, I'm not that. I, confident. I think the bigger issue is, will he just be as good? Right. As, as he's going to be 35 when the season mm -hmm. tips off. That is not, that's not young folks speaking as a 35 year old. <laughs> that ain't young. So I like, that's a question. I do think if Bam is really like into the three point volume, I'm not saying taking five attempts a game, but like just comfortable spacing out to the corners. I think you can get to some interesting lines with him and Kalel Ware, who mm -hmm. from what I saw of his rookie league film, um, like that, he might end up being a monster defensively. And like, that just might be the pathway to getting to better units. We've seen them experiment with kind of dual bigs in the past. Um, that, I'm not saying that's the only recipe for them to get there, but I, I could envision them being better. If you tell me Tyler Hero's healthier, Bam is mm -hmm. shooting threes, Terry Rozier's lasting the whole season. Okay, maybe. And, and look, the Alec Burke signing was good at the minimum, but you have to go worse here. Like, it's just not like they lost a, a very valuable rotation piece and they just don't have like, yeah, okay, you have Jaime Hawkins, but is he going to do enough for you offensively to just, you're not going to miss Kayla Martin at all. Or, and even if Jaime Hawkins was getting better, it wasn't just like you had depth to spare or bankable yeah. depth to spare at that point. So it's a tough number. It wouldn't shock me if they won 47, 48, no. but I think too many things need to break right for them to get there. And I will say, I continue to, like even they have Tyler Tyler Hero, they have Terry Rozier, they have Bam, they have Jimmy. I just have so many questions about their offense. Right? Yeah, uh, the, pretty high variance. Like they could win fifty four games, and you'd be like, yeah, okay. Well, that I guess Jovic popped, and I guess Hawkes actually did continue to get better. Maybe Highsmith like solidify, like proves he's actually that kind of a three point shooter. Uh, but yeah, it, it really is just like there's too many like iffy like make or break things that have to go right to get over to get to 47 like that's not a low total so I, I i'm uncomfortable with it but i'm glad we kind of got to the same spot there and i think it's my turn okay let's we got to start picking off some of these really low totals let's do the detroit pistons uh a whopping 14 uh nba basketball victories last season uh just quick like overlook here it, it is really hard to be that bad twice in a row unless you're the process sixers and detroit is not taking that kind of approach i don't think uh it doesn't seem that way based on how they've transacted now new management you never know we talked several times about how like this this new this new power structure is not married to any of these picks uh except for the most recent one so like you know if you if you are concerned about getting uh, a year from now to the point where it's like what do we do with jalen duran and Jaden ivy extension wise like maybe you do look to move those guys i don't know that that's the right move yet but that's on the table it also uh, doesn't can if i can interject moving those guys doesn't make you worse it might not <laughs> it might not yeah that's the thing uh so i'm going better uh, just like, I, I kind of like the Beasley ad, the Harris ad. I think Paul Reed helps, um, you get a full season of Simone Fontecchio, uh, Cade Cunningham arrived, I think can continue to get better. 14 is just so low, right? Like you just, they're going to be better than that. And if they're not, I'm curious as to like, what, is, what, what are the moves or the, the nightmare scenarios in which they're worse? I guess Cade gets injured again and yeah. like Jay Ivy doesn't develop and you're suddenly you just don't really have anyone to run the offense. I think why I also think they're going to be better is they just have, I'm not super, I don't want to say I'm not super high. I, I guess I'm not super in tune with like what this roster is supposed to actually accomplish, mm -hmm. but like you can get to some really interesting defensive lineups. If you want to play a Thompson and Ron Holland together, and mm -hmm. hopefully a Thompson's healthy after dealing with those blood clots. And the other thing is, okay, we talk a lot about the redundancies of some of the main play, like Asar Thompson, Ron Holland, even Jay Nivey, and the ball dominance or the lack of shooting there. They have spacing on this team now. Uh, they got Malik Beasley. They brought in Tobias Harris, who could still be a floor spacer. You still have Isaiah Stewart, Simone Fontecchio you re-signed. You have Tim Hardaway Jr., who's going to take a bunch of shots you don't want him to, but in theory, he will space the floor. So I think the fact that you can get to lineups more easily, where it's Cade, 
plus at least three shooters, then I feel like you, you, you're just going to win closer to 20 something games by virtue yeah. of that. And not just for Cunningham, but like, you know, this is a very, this is very much to me, a prove it season for Jaden Ivy. And you can, I mean, he's, he's like less so than Cade. Like he is someone that you got, if you put Beasley out there with, I don't know, Beasley Harris or Beasley Fontecchio beef stew. Like there's, he needs the shooting because like the only real NBA skill he's shown is the ability to get to the basket quickly. And if you can space the floor for him, maybe you set him up to succeed. So you can at least, although this has kind of been the theory of the Pistons for a couple years now of like, let's get veterans at space. Cause it'll help right. our non-shooting guards and our, and our shooting guards. I, I think it just makes a little more sense. It's, it's easier for me to see it like kind of functioning how they've intended this year. Um, but then, again, it, this is all like, they're not going to win 13 games, which is what you'd have to believe for you to go lower. So this is just better by default. This is, I mean, yeah, that's an easy one. 